Um, here I see. Wait, first of all, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, okay. So among counselors, I see. Uh, obviously, I see a uh, 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 counselor Carney there, counselor Driscoll. Let me hear as I scroll through the list. The second district is represented, counselor. Oh, great! Thank you, thank you. Rod, Councillor Hogan, uh, Councillor Rod, Councillor Green. I think that's about it for now. Uh, is Madam President here? Yes, not. Okay. All right. Uh, first of all, as always, uh, the uh, rules for this meeting is uh, our will be here for one hour. Uh, the first 50 minutes dedicated to uh, the presenter and for counselors to, uh, counselors to ask questions. And the last 10 minutes is uh, we will give it to our community uh, members to ask questions. Usually we, we allow three considering the amount of time we have, we allow for three questions. So that will be that. Uh, Ray. Is Ray here? Not? Yes, I'm here. Sorry. Okay. okay. So when you go, we, we, we are going to let you go ahead and and uh, present on the agenda. And as always, counselors, if you have uh, a question between, feel free to stop Ray for clarification. Uh, Ray, take it away. Hi, good evening, counselors and members of the public um, and members of the CRB that I see on the line. Um, thank you for taking the time um, out of your schedule to meet with us today just to discuss um, some information as to what has been going on between the CRB and the department over the last uh, year or so. Um, the concerns that we have with regard to 50A um, and our current legislation. So first off, um, the CRB has been attempting to have meetings with the council, uh, the mayor's office and the chief of police um, and also their council along with ours for the past year. Um, the reason for those meetings have been to um, improve the communications between the two departments and to work through the legislation that we currently um, are under. So with that being said, we had continuous issues uh, previously with regard to the amount of information that was being provided to the CRB, the, the time it was taking for them to provide us with information and just the overall processes. Um, so we began to have those conversations in January of last year. Uh, we um, invited the council, we invited the deputy mayor, the mayor's office, the chief, and we all have been meeting uh, every month since then to try to work through the process. Um, we have been intentional about advising that there had been a backlog um, of cases from 2017, uh, 2018, and 2019 um, that had not been addressed by the previous chief um, and the the administration as we were trying to move forward. Um, so in those conversations, we um, began to talk about a number of items. We began to talk about the previous recommendations that the CRB has made related to the body-worn camera footage policy uh, with regard to, well, I should say the body-worn camera policy, also use of force over the years, uh, mental health, and among other things that we have been recommending that didn't seem like it was being addressed by the department. Um, so we began to ask those questions as to whether, you know, what are we doing to hold them um, to the legislation and what can we do as the CRB to, um, to make that happen? Because we feel that the complainants issues that they have presented to us from 2017, 2018, and 2019 needed some resolution 
and we were doing a disservice by not being provided with that documentation um, by the department in order for us to provide resolve. Um, if you, I've provided the council with copies of the 2017 through 2019 annual reports. Um, I provided them previously and as a refresher just last week um, for um, any comments or questions. We currently have questions related to 50A and how is that going to impact our current legislation uh, related to releasing information to the public uh, for FOIL requests, general media inquiries, and things of that nature. Um, we have also had issues previously with regard to hearings and how those hearings have been taking place um, now that some officers have obtained attorneys uh, to attend those hearings with us. Uh, if you look on our website, you will see that we have hearing policies and procedures. We have um, all those documents that are forthcoming on the website, but they we were running into some issues. And so we began to have these conversations to make sure that we could all sort of get on the same page with the information. Um, uh, previously in our conversation with Councillor Chol, um, Councillor Majok, I apologize, he requested that I provide with information with regard to hearings. Um, so in 2017, the CRB held 26 hearings and we processed 80 cases. In 2018, we held 15 hearings and processed 77 cases. In 2019, we processed, we had seven hearings and we processed 50 cases. Um, as you know, I've been the administrator since 2017. So the total hearings that have been held in the last three years that I've been, well, four years that I've been here are 48 hearings and we processed 207 cases during that time. During that time, the cases that were processed were either held for a hearing, we had a lack of jurisdiction, meaning that the CRB received a complaint from someone um, and the party that the complainant engaged in was not the Syracuse Police Department, could have been the sheriffs, could have been the troopers um, or some other entity. We had some cases that were closed based on lack of contact. And that occurs because uh, there is a delay in processing cases when the Office of Professional Standards takes a long time to provide us with our reports. Um, as we know, and we've discussed previously, complainants, um, telephone numbers change, addresses change, and thereafter. And it makes it difficult if these cases are not processed in a timely manner for us to get back in contact with them. And then we have our no hearing letters in which the board has voted after holding a hear after holding a meeting that the case is not going to a hearing. Um, in terms of subpoenas, the CRB has utilized its subpoena power since I came into um, this position since 2017, we have subpoenaed 21 officers to attend hearings. Um, three officers have been subpoenaed more than one time to attend a hearing. Um, so I'm not sure if that is enough information to provide to you. Um, I wanna provide time for you to be able to ask questions. Um, I was going to specifically discuss um, the backlog of cases in which we had previously sent a letter um, on right, June 19th. Right, real, real quickly before you go into that, can you do me a favor and send yes. us over the top offenders that have multiple um, cases filed against them? Yes, would you like the list of just the officers or including their names? Wait, huh? So we have a list in which we have just the how many officers have a certain number of complaints filed against no, no, them. I want to know who they are. Okay, thank you. Will do. Thank you, Madam President. Thank you. And so um, the case backlog we had um, in June of 2019, we sent over a letter addressing the fact that there was a continuous backlog um, with the department and the CRB. 
Um, we addressed that letter to the mayor and we addressed that letter to the chief of police, but we also CC'd the council um, so that the council was aware um, that that issue was occurring. We also sent a letter uh, June 13th of 2019 related to the Grace Street incident and the SPD's use of force policy and our continued recommendations related to use of force and how that um, this case um, did have a certain element of media attention and the SPD was able to process this case and finish this case within um, the time allotted by our legislation, but that had not been happening previously and we wanted to know why. Um, so we have continuously tried to work with the department uh, related to the outstanding cases and why they were not providing them to us um, since within the time frame based on the legislation. Um, I'd like to stop there and provide anyone with an opportunity to answer questions because I may have more information at that time. Councilors, if you have questions, thank you, Ray. Um, if you have a question, please go ahead. If, if not, I got, I got a couple of them myself. Okay. Um, so, so Ray, you, you spoke about uh, OPS and, and how you struggle in, in trying to um, get the cases be sent over and stuff like that. Has, has that improved at all this year or is, has it much, has, has it just been the same? So the case, the the process has improved since Chief Buckner has been here. Um, we have started to receive cases in a more timely manner in a sense, but it's not within the designated protocol that is set forth by the legislation. So typically it's not within 30 days from the date that the complaint is filed, which is what the legislation takes. It's usually, I mean, it's even most likely, it's usually past 45 days as well. So it is not within the time frame that the legislation allotted. So those are some of the things that we were going to discuss with the council as to how can we make this um, relationship better in terms of them having a strict adherence and being able to stick to what the legislation says. Even when they send out a letter to the complainant, um, the letter states that they will complete their investigation within 45 days, but that's not happening. And how do we hold them accountable for not meeting that deadline? Ours says 30, their letter says 45, and you're still not meeting 45. What, you know, what can we do? Um, what can we lean on the council to do to hold them accountable for why it's taking them so long to complete investigations? Um, and so based upon the current legislation, it says that our investigation will not be completed until we receive the Office of Professional Standards report. So with that being said, we wait until we receive their report because that's gonna give us the body-worn camera footage if there is some available. That is going to give us the booking video from when a person enters the Justice Center. That is going to give us the officer's reports um, for what they have provided as the statement to the event. That's gonna give us the, um, the force report if excessive force was used or force was used in this particular situation. So we rely on the police department's reports in order to finalize our investigation and they have been taking a long time for them to provide them. Um, so that is something that we need to address. So when they send you that 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 complaint and, and, and the stuff that you need, when they send you the stuff you need, are those stuff at all altered or or do they send it to you as 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 they were? Because the reason I'm asking that I'm wondering what takes what takes long to have stuff be sent to you. Um, so I have not received any documents that have been redacted. Um, so the body worn camera camera footage that I receive is not redacted. The police reports are not redacted. Um, so I'm not sure. Um, we asked for the cops cameras as well. If there are some in the location for which the incident occurred, we're asking for all of that. Um, and I'm not sure what the delay is. Um, you know, have, have I encourage you the complainant to speak with the Office of Professional Standards if they feel comfortable related to the process so that if in fact that is some sort of delay, 
um, I encourage them, but it does state that they do not have to speak with them um, because some of them, again, fear speaking with the Office of Professional Standards or are uncomfortable speaking with them based upon um, their relationship with the police department. Now, have you had any preliminary meeting with 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 Chief and the OPS in regards to what's happening? Just to just to see what what they are struggling with as to why it takes so long to have stuff like and and over. So we have heard that that they have struggled because of the number of people they've had in the office. Um, previously, they had um, two sergeants and one lieutenant in the office. Um, based upon the information that I'm receiving, they are getting another sergeant in the office. So that would make three sergeants in their office, one lieutenant, and they're going to have somebody that is going to do more of less like the file opening and things of that nature. So they are working to increase the personnel in that department. But I would say to you that if the Office of Professional Standards is stating that they need more personnel in their office in order to process these cases, then the CRB needs more personnel as well. Um, as you know, the CRB has myself as a full-time person and my colleague, which is a legal secretary, and then we have a part-time investigator um, that we allot $5,000 a year with. So if we are processing more than 100 cases and we are able to do it with myself, with regard to a full-time person and just a part-time investigator, then I'd say if you need more people, then we do too. Um, and that would mean that we need to increase funding uh, related to the CRB to allow more people um, in the office. But you know, I do realize that they process internal complaints too that are filed by um, members of the department to the Office of Professional, as well as external complaints, but we average at least 100 complaints a year. So if we spend $5,000 on a private investigator, they're only processing about 10 cases a year. So with that being said, I'm still processing 90 cases myself while working, you know, doing all the day-to-day -day operations with regard to the CRB. So we would need more help as well. I don't think you should be framing it as you would need more help. I think you need to frame it as you're getting the work done. If you can get the work done, then two sergeants and a lieutenant should be able to get the work done or three sergeants and a lieutenant should get the work done. And if they can't, then maybe they should get rid of the sergeants and the lieutenants and bring in a civilian to do it. Uh, Councilman Joe, if I could. Yeah, pro tem, go ahead. Uh, Renette, we've been here before. Mm -hmm. uh, when, you know, before you got here, I had this discussion with your predecessor, Joe Lapari, about the fact that, you know, one of the things that could be done, and this is gonna sound uh, beyond familiar to you, was that there could be established a communication between the CRB director and the chair of public safety where any recommend every every quarter you provide the public safety chair a report on any policies that may have been suggested, policy suggestions that may have been made in that time period. And then the council would take a look at its ability to either legislate or to negotiate and push the issue with the administration. That's familiar, right? I've been calling yes. on that since I've been here in the CRB with all due respect hasn't done it yet. Uh, yes, we have. So, um, I, I, I apologize. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on one second. Okay. Uh, I'm not saying it to be antagonistic. I'm still offering the same thing. You okay. Know, the other thing, um, the answer to the question of why they're taking so long, let's be blunt. You know what it is. It's, it's a respect that one, right? They feel that they don't have to. Uh, and somebody, if somebody could mute there. Thank you. Somebody want to hear on there? Thank you. Uh, it's a respect thing. They don't feel they have to, right? And we've also discussed this before that the real power uh, for them and ultimately the solution for the CRB lied in their contract language. Right, because the contract gives the chief exclusive control over. That was done years ago to create a buffer between City Hall and the police department. And so I would state over and over again, there's a need to scrutinize that contract to find out where those changes could be made. And obviously the appeal, an appeal would have to be made to the state because the state law put those protections in place. Ultimately, we can't override state law. The other thing, um, 
you know, in regards to the council, this this demand for the council to give the CRB power, that what you're asking us to do is to violate the separations law because the CRB is a creature of the legislature. We can't usurp power from the uh, executive. That's an Article 78 hearing. So we have to go two things we can do to lend some teeth to the matter. One is the policy recommend the policy sharing that I mentioned earlier, that if you have policy recommendations, you give them the council of a joke, we deliberate ultimately, obviously with you included in the dialogue to determine whether it's something we can legislate or if it's something we have to negotiate with the mayor about, because the power over the police lie with the mayor, let's be clear, not with us. The other thing, is that we have to seek that state route. When you're talking about residency, the Taylor law allows them to live outside the city. So unless there's an amendment to the state Taylor law, they're not gonna be obligated to live in the city. We've offered, you know, and I'm just, I'm just throwing this in there as a part of the discussion. We've offered incentives, we've tried, well, you saw that contract, that didn't work. We offered incentives, we offered a host of things, but it's gonna take an amendment to the Taylor law I'm throwing that out there on purpose because that was a part of our legislative agenda that we announced in January that we were sick of referendum to amend the Taylor law. So if, you're re if we're really talking, and let's be clear, cities across upstate New York have the same issue in regards to police living outside the city. And so if we had an effort in that respect, that's how you get that change on the state level if the legislature doesn't want to do it. These are the, you know, so when you talk about a real solution to the police issue. We've been discussing it for a long time. I certainly have. And I don't recall, I could be wrong, but I don't recall any dialogue happening or any action being taken after the fact, certainly not with the previous director to that end. And I'm not suggesting that it hasn't been, but we haven't had any discussion, which means Cho haven't had any discussion. But Cho's new. So in both of y'all defense, he just got here five minutes ago. So, you know, my, my thing is those are two things Right now, to everybody listening, if you're talking about giving any real teeth to this thing, it is to share the policy suggestion with the council, as mentioned, but also you got to seek action with the state. The conversation has to happen with the state delegates that we elected. Right? They have the power to change the Taylor law. This is why our hands are tied. So while a demand is being made to the council, it's being made with all, with all due respect for nothing if you're not going to the people who have the power to change it and not demanding that they change it. And all the things that they passed in the state, why was the Taylor law, law not included? Why was an amendment to the Taylor law not included? Myself and the president, and I'll end here, Councilor Majo, have been arguing for residency since we got here over eight years ago. And I'm not gonna say who was the chair of the committee over cities back then, but they told us it'll never happen and walked away. Then another delegate, told us it'll never happen and walked away. They were both local. You understand what I'm saying? So we've been in that, we've been pushing that since we got here. So the real power lies with the people we vote for in next year's election in the state, same people we voted for last year, in last year's election. The conversation has to happen with them. They're the ones that have the power as it relates to the police department. I just wanna make that clear. And their residency specifically and anything relative to their union contract. So if I may respond to those um, comments, um, Councillor Bay, and with all due respect, I previously have had these conversations with Councillor Thompson. I previously sent our recommendations to him. Um, on a regular basis, he reviewed the copies of our reports. We know right. that he is no we we know that he is no longer here, but I cannot um stand by you know i want you to know that that has been done we have consistently asked related to the contract and why the crb process was not included in the contact by even this current administration and i was advised that that was administrative and did not have to do with the contract so i have tried to take your um suggestions and run with them per se and i have experienced the same roadblocks with regard to those um i when we were doing the negotiations most recently um with regard to the contract that the council voted down i had requested that i hope that the crb is included in that contract with regard to something that the officers are obligated to attend to and that's what that was the response that i received um so we will um 
forward all those recommendations that we have been making to Councillor Majok um, for him to address with the rest of the council. We have a sheet and I can forward it as soon as we get done um, related to all the legislation change, um, all the uh, recommendations we've made with regard to policies and procedures to um, the police department. So I can do that as well. So I would like to say but I, we've been working with who we've been working with, who was the public safety chair prior to Councillor Majo. Yeah, we, we don't doubt that at all. I'm going to be honest with you. Communication wasn't that great back then. You know, so and that's all I'll say about that. But certainly okay. communicated to Councillor Majo. There's a host of things that we were working on. Some of them were on your list. We saw your list and we were already working on some about the council specifically. We were already working on some of those things, and it's one of the reasons why we hired an outside attorney. All right, but you know, do it now because we know that Councilor Majok will do the job. He'll deliver as much. I think we'll get a lot more traction, and we can find a little bit more balance in, the, in this discussion. You know, because communications are a lot more open this time. And I'll yield, uh, Councilor Majok. Thank you, Councilor Van. Yep. Thank you, Pro uh, Tem. I, I, in defense, uh, I don't know if this makes any sense, uh, Ray, but I, I know you have forwarded me uh, a number of reports. I don't know if it's, 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 I haven't read all of it yet, as, as, as you can see. But in your defense, you, you I have asked um, a good number of reports that you have gave, given, uh, given them to me. So uh, I, don't, I, don't, I haven't seen it in the email yet. When you send them to me, do you also send them to the other counselors? In which I would recommend you do that. So yeah. this most recent email that I sent with all of the um, reports from 2016 on, I did include all the counselors, and typically we provide them to the counselors in their mailboxes um, in the council's office. But due to COVID-19, we did not provide the 2019 report in their mailboxes, but they have received them in emails. Uh, we do the same thing with regard to quarterly reports. We provide them to the council, the mayor's office, and also the chief of police as well, uh, prior to them being uploaded until our website. Um, as you know, the city's website has been under some um, revamping. So many items that should be on the CRB's website are not there. Um, so we've been working with the IT department and also the mayor's office related to that to try to get those things squared away. But yes, uh, we'll continue to do that. And I will, we made a short list of the recommendations that the CRB has been making since 2015 um, or 2013, somewhere around in there. And we'll forward, I'll forward that list to all the counselors um, as well. All right. Well, uh, one quick you, Raynette, before you forward, don't forward them, forward them to the Public Safety Committee and then okay. they'll brief the, or the whole council. Will do. Thank you, President Hudson. Thank, Thank you, you, Madam President. Now, now, Ray, let's 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 get back to the backlog. Um, you said you said had you it, it, since since you've been uh, the administrator, you said you you have you have had a total of 207 cases. So we have had a cons we have consistently had issues with regard to the backlog, and I have included the previous. Um, Public Safety Committee. Um, I have acknowledgments from the previous police chief um, acknowledging the fact that we had 2017 cases that were outstanding in 2018. So we have been communicating the backlog for a period of time. Um, as of right now, the current backlog has been dwindling um, as the Office of Professional Standards has been providing reports. We were um, advised most recently uh, we were receiving reports that had been completed by the Office of Professional Standards, but never turned over to the CRB. So those um, now have to be processed with the other cases to ensure that um, the 18 month deadline for which an officer can be disciplined does not um, be is not missed at that point in time. So currently to date, we have um, we started with a total of 93 or more cases um, that were that were outstanding from 2017 and 2018, but we have since been working with the Office of Professional Standards, and they have been providing us with complaints. Um, so the complaints that have been provided previously are um, bring the total down to as of right now, as of just the other day. 
Um, give me one second. Let me pull up this report. I apologize. So currently we have a total of 89 cases that are outstanding from 2017 to 2019. Um, and those include cases that are outside the 18 month deadline for which an officer can be disciplined. Um, the cases were received in 2017 and 2018 and forwarded directly to the Office of Professional Standards and they still remain outstanding. Um, and they have been working on them. So in the month of April, of this year, we received seven cases that had been filed in 2017 and 2018. In June, we received six cases that had been filed in those same years. So the reason why the CRB was not providing a specific number uh, previously related to this was because we were giving the Office of Professional Standards an opportunity to um, catch up on the cases. So as of right now, as of today, we have 89 cases. Um, two of those uh, cases, we they were back to 93 cases before, but because some of the complainants were the same complainants, we decided to combine those cases into one complaint. So that is the reason why we are at 89 cases that are outstanding from 2017 to 2019. Okay, counselors, uh, anything? Okay, with, with, with that rate, now, you said, I think from our conversation before, you said for a case, a case can stay for 18 months, right? Well, an officer has 18 months based upon civil service law to be disciplined with regard to an action. So based on civil service law, you must bring charges or you must bring a resolution to a matter within 18 months from the date of the incident. So when a person has interaction with an officer, from 18 months from that date, the officer must be brought up and advised as to the charges against them and some sort of resolve needs to occur. If it's outside of the 18 months, you can still process that case, you can still look at that case, but the officer cannot be disciplined. Okay. So many of those cases are outside of the 18 month deadline. So no officer will be disciplined, but the department and myself will still process those cases. So, so I, I see maybe like, like some loopholes here, right? Absolutely. Um, I, I personally believe that sometimes, you know, there could be an opportunity for someone to push a case back um, so that the 18 month deadline passes prior to the resolve of a case. Um, which presents another grave issue um, to the public's trust with regard to the department being the sole person to hold themselves accountable. Um, I do know for a fact that all of these cases that are outside the 18 month deadline have been provided to the Office of Professional Standards and they had adequate time to process them within the 18 months. Mr. Mr. McCarthy, you had, I think you had, uh, I heard your voice. Thank you, sir. I just want to add one detail to this discussion of the backlog. Um, Raynette is using figures based on the cases that we know about. Um, so a case can come either to CRB first or to OPS first. In either case, we're supposed to send it over to the other body immediately so they know. Um, OPS historically has not done that, sometimes for a very long time, which is now we have these, which is why we now have these cases that are beyond the 18 month discipline deadline. But what we don't know is if there are other cases at OPS that we've never heard of and don't know about at all. There's no accountability for that. I've asked this question at a number of meetings with the chief over the last year or so and asked him to, to think about this and see what kind of accountability there could be to make sure that OPS isn't simply sitting on cases forever. Um, last time I asked it, Chief Cecil looked at me and said very dismissively, well, there's nothing nefarious going on. There might be a case in the back of the drawer that we don't know about. Well, there is something nefarious going on or there was. For years, SPD ignored virtually every requirement in the statute dealing with the CRB. And 
Chief Buckner is making progress to answer your question. Yes, there's th things are catching up, but there's no accountability. There's no mechanism for knowing whether there are cases just sitting there in addition to the ones we're getting. Okay, with with that, so so for for the, for the stuff that you have found to, to to be sustained, and you forward the recommendation to the chief, to the council, and to the mayor, how many how many of those have actually been been used to, as 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 a way to discipline an officer? Has there been any, any discipline done uh, based on on CRV recommendations since you've been here? Ray? So since I've been here, the only time the department typically um, agrees with a CRB finding is when the CRB does not substantiate a complaint against the officer. Um, so it means that the complaint was unfounded. Say there was an allegation of excessive force or there was an allegation of demeanor. If the CRB did not find in favor of the complainant, the officers agree. So I would say that based upon my experience that I've had, the department tip never typically agrees with the CRB. So I would say it there, I would say there has been pretty much no, um, a recommendation by the CRB has not been utilized in disciplining an officer. If the department is going to discipline an officer, they discipline the officer based upon their information and knowledge, and it's not because of the CRB. Okay, so if, 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 and you and uh, you may not have this information, how many recommendation or discipline have you given? So anytime the CRB has a hearing and they substantiate a complaint, we make a recommendation of some sort of discipline, either with a written warning, verbal warning, suspension, um, or you know it could be them being fired, it could be them being removed from a particular post. Um, so we have been making those recommendations all the way along. If you give me one minute. Um, so in each annual report, we have provided, um, which I sent over to the council, each annual report, we will tell you how many, we will tell you the number of recommendations that we've made in that particular calendar year and the response from the department either they agreed or disagreed with it and if the discipline was issued we we list that as well so um i i don't know it off the top of my head um but it is in every annual report that we submit as to and it's also in the quarterly reports um that we submit as well when it comes to be a substantiated finding and what the board has recommended to the chief and then when they when they do that when they, when an officer is disciplined uh, or maybe when, when that discipline coincide with your recommendation, do you usually hear a written, written communication between you and the department to let you know that oh. this is what they are doing or or is it just you you catch up with it whenever you can? So the after every hearing, the department is supposed to make a response to the CRB related to that matter and tell us why they chose the discipline they chose. Um, if it disagrees with the discipline that we recommend, we are supposed to get that in a letter. Previously, the letter that we would receive was that um, if discipline was if discipline was imposed, it was handled appropriately by the department. We have since informed. Um, Chief Buckner, that that is not satisfactory, that we must be provided with more detail than it was handled appropriately, and that the letter that he responds to our finding has to be in detail and tell us more. Um, there was a previous, again, protocol prior to this point in which they were not telling us why they chose the discipline that they chose, and it would just, that was how it was happening. So. <laughs> And, uh, okay, and then and then on that note, if for 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 the cases, for the cases that you taken, how how many do you sustain? Is, is there a high percentage of of sustaining, or is it just walk us through walk me through that for a second? So the sustained rate for cases varies. Um, it varies based upon. 
Um, it varies based upon the information that we are provided. So um, the number again in the reports we have, we break it down. Let me just pull up the 2019 report for you. Um, so one moment, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rebirth, you've got some kind of like crazy thing going on. If you could mute. All right. So in um so in last year we were able to hold seven hearings based upon the fact. Um, so we have seven hearings in which we resulted in four sustained findings by the hearing panel. Those sustained findings were allegations of demeanor, excessive force, and racial bias. We had two, we had two cases in which we, rec we stated that there was insufficient evidence for an allegation of excessive force and unlawful search. We had seven cases in which we, um, I would say, allegations of exon that we exonerated the officer for excessive force and demeanor. And we had um, six unfounded allegations of false arrest, demeanor. And so when we have a case, a case has a number of different allegations. We could have a case that has five allegations at the start. So when we decide to bring a case to a hearing, we may be hearing all of those five allegations or we may be only hearing three. It basically depends on what the evidence from the investigation shows. So that is the reason why in the reports we make that type of breakdown um, as to um, what is occurring at the time of a hearing and the breakdown as to our recommendations. So in our 2018 report, The breakdown was um, the following. In 2018, we held 15 hearings. Eight hearings resulted in sustained findings by a hearing panel for allegations of demeanor, excessive force, withholding personal information from medical staff, denial of next of kin notification in a timely manner, improper stop, racial bias and profiling, false arrest and inadequate investigation. Seven hearings resulted in insufficient evidence or unfounded or an exonerated finding. And those were related to allegations of demeanor, failure to act related to a vehicle, failure to act related to an arrest, excessive force and untruthfulness in the police report. A sustained finding means that the panel found that there was a substantial evidence that the alleged misconduct did occur. So that is what we utilize um, when we are making findings. I could provide you with more information uh, related to that. So the CRB stated in our report that in the 15 responses that we received from the chief of police from 2018, um, the chief agreed with the CRB in cases where the alleged allegations were determined to be lacking sufficient evidence, unfounded and exonerated. The chief disagreed with seven findings with sustained findings against the officer and agreed with one case in which the officer sustained findings were advised that the issue was addressed accordingly. So again, most of the allegations in which we are not finding um, in favor of the complainant the department is accepting those findings, but they disagree when we sustain the finding. Chair Major, can I ask more question? Yes, Councilor Wright. Slight, slightly different, but Renette, of the, so I understand they're in general not totally, they're not responsive or haven't been as responsive as, as we want them to be. And I will add the chief is on and trying to unmute himself to talk. So I think that whoever's in charge of that may have to mute him because he's on a phone. But one question, um, of, so if, if a, Peter mentioned that 
when you get a case, if, if the person tells you that you have to notify the department and if the department gets a case, they're supposed to notify you. So of the, and then there's a hundred, there's a year and a half time period during which an officer can be disciplined. So of how many cases have you gotten where the year and a half has expired at the time the department notifies you there is a complaint, that there is a, has that happened? So Yes, that does happen. So a complainant can file a case because they don't know that a um, that there's 18 months from the date of the incident. So even a person can file a complaint in 2018 for an incident that occurred in 2017 and be outside the 18 months. But we have received reports from the police department. I could tell you with a little bit more research as to the number of them that we're receiving that are outside of the 18 months when we receive their report. I don't have that specific number, but I can provide that to you. But we do, you do know, receive reports. Is there like a timestamp on the police side so that you can see the person took a year and a half or that the department took a year and a half? Do you have that detail? So sometimes in the Office of Professional Standards report, they will tell, tell us when they received, when they began investigating the complaint, and we can look at that. But I previously sent the complaints over via email um, so that I would know when they received them in terms of that was my way of being able to have a, a sense of checks and balances was sending it via email because previously we were walking cases over to the department and handing them into the Office of Professional Standards. And now we've been trying to create the paper trail. Um, so we have been sending, we've been sending them over via email and also we have been providing them with, um, emails and reports advising them which cases are outstanding. But yes, we do receive reports from the office of professional standards and the 18 months has already passed. Summarize that for us and follow up. That would be helpful. And with that, if okay. the chief can talk, if somebody can unmute him, I think he'd appreciate it. At this point, just first of all, uh, Jim, you make sure that you keep uh, track of uh, any of our community members that uh, want to ask question at the end, uh, because we only got three minutes left uh, for uh, for Ray and the counselors. Yes, we have we have one counselor. Um, okay, okay, all right. I don't want to don't want to hug everything here, but uh, uh, counselors, anyone want to add? Uh, Anything here before we got two minutes left? Uh, Councillor Majok, uh, the, the chief has been apparently trying to chime in. So for some reason, he, his phone right, isn't right. working. I don't know if anybody can communicate to him how to unmute his mic. Chief, oh, can you I, say which call in user you are? Because if you could text one of us and say it, then we could be easier. There's a lot of unidentified caller callers. Yeah, if you just hit the chat button and say that I can't unmute myself, it'll show up exactly who you are, and then maybe we could help you out. But it might be a problem with your actual microphone. All right. So I guess I guess let's let's figure let's wait for a chief then. Uh, I, I don't see him. I don't see him yet. Um, I would like to mention that in our conversations that we've been having with the corporation council, the chief, our attorney, and um, and counselors, we are working on um, issues concerning the timeline. Um, in our current legislation, it says that the complaints need to be sent over to our office within one business day from the date of receipt. Um, it also states that their investigation must be completed within 30 days. And then it says that we are to have 90, we have 60 days thereafter to finish our um, investigation and to hold a hearing if the panel decides. So we're working on a memorandum of understanding to clear the um, air with regard to those timeframes. And we're also um, based upon the mayor's executive order in which he stated that they are not going to impose discipline before our CRB decisions moving forward. We are making sure that that is some sort of memorandum of understanding between the two part two departments. So I wanted to mention that. Um, I do have okay. some. 
I also have just a few more comments related to the FOIL requests that are going to be inundated when uh, 50 days um, is finally repealed. Um, and that is. Um, Ray, our, Ray, yes. Ray, uh, we had reserved 10 minutes for the, uh, okay. the community members. Uh, okay. let's, 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 let's give them a floor first and then uh, okay. if nothing else, you can, you can add those comments at the end. Okay, sounds like a plan. Thank All you. All right, Jim, Jim, do we have anyone there? Yes, Councillor uh, Yusuf Kadir uh, hit the chat button at the beginning and stated that he wanted to speak. So if you're still on, um, I do not see. I am here. Uh, it's Abdul yeah. Kadir. Uh, uh, if you, wait, wait, Yusuf, if you're going to make comments, we it, we only allow one minute for question and two minutes for comment. Okay. Yep, I will be very, very brief. Uh, all right as brief as I can be. Uh, thank you all for having this discussion. It's a really important conversation. Um, before I get into the comments that I wanted to make, I just want um, to be clear with something. Um, Councillor Bay, I, I think I totally understand uh, the need to make sure that the care law is addressed at the state level. I'm intimately aware of how the various levels of government have certain responsibilities and where those responsibilities lie and are juxtaposed to the types of responsibilities that exist within the constitution. Actually, it's never been my position for there to be a residency requirement. It's never been my position, to be clear, um, even though that context video has gone viral, that's actually not what we were talking about or that I was talking about. I was thinking the size, scope, and power of the police department and the fact that a significant proportion of the police don't live in the city. And there's nothing that prevented the mayor from holding a press conference as the mayor, he has a bully pulpit, asking our state delegation and governor to provide an exemption for Syracuse or to pass legislation to address that issue. And so I think what we're talking about is leadership on behalf of our administration to mitigating and addressing the fact that we are extracting tens of millions of dollars out of our community. To the question about the citizen review board, again, I'm also intimately aware of the distinction between the powers that the CRB has. I've been very involved in these issues. Um, I actually just earlier today wanted to go over the court case that happened in 2017, the decision um, whereby the city um, tried to litigate to impede upon the CRB's ability that a judge determined that they had subpoena powers and had the right to attend counsel. Um, and it's a part of a pattern of the police department to not engage in a good faith effort to address issues of misconduct when citizens file complaints. Why we are saying, and while we do understand intimately that this may have to go through a referendum process, um, why we are saying that the CRB needs to have enforcement powers is because left alone to the police department, they're not going to do it. They're just not going to do it. There's nothing that tells us that they are going to comply with the common council's legislative intent in behind instituting and expanding the powers of the CRB in 2011 or the community's interest for there to be resolution of issues of misconduct. And if we don't begin to engage in different tactics and strategies, two things will occur. First, citizens will continue to lose trust in law enforcement's ability to address issues. And two, citizens will continue to lose trust in the citizens review board as an oversight mechanism. We maintain the idea that the Citizens Review Board should be a citizen-driven process because we believe that there needs to be citizens who have oversight of law enforcement. And we're deeply concerned at the way which the number of strategies and tactics that the police department uses to stymie, including the, this most recent issue that has come right from the paper. We support efforts to move this issue along, and we look to towards addressing this. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow when we have a conversation about the need to pass the Right to Know Act. But again, just to be clear, we're not, and I'm not asking for a residency requirement. We're actually talking about reducing the size, scope, and power and replacing some of the things that law enforcement do with community people who have expertise, who can help reduce crime, who can address some of these issues because law enforcement doesn't necessarily um, stop crime from happening. They may uh, solve it once it's already occurred. I want to use it. Yes, yes, uh, Councilman Job, allow me, allow me to respond, man. I'll be blunt. You know, one, two things. One, 
when the council is addressed in such a way that would suggest that they're not already involved in the issue, all we could do is respond to the objective statement. So while I get what was intended, we can only respond to what we hear. The statement in regards to residency, uh, Yusuf, was not in relation to your discussion because plenty of people have been talking about it. It's just I stated it for the group and for any person who may be on the phone because it's a long-standing discussion we've been having. At the crux of the thing, we're all on the same page. You know what I mean, and it's really just a matter of us figuring out how to get it done. You know, I mean, certainly the council prior to us who created the CRB created it with an intent to do its job. It's been a tough role going, and certainly uh, it's the intent of, the, I can speak certainly for this council, it's intent to be uh, effective when dealing with police matters. I believe this council has demonstrated its position on the subject of fairness as it relates to our police and other departments. Uh, so I just wanted to state that, that, you know, we're not, we're, we're more on the same page than it appears that we're on opposite. We're not on opposites at all. But, you know, we, we I, I just state that we can only respond to what we hear. All right. So, all right. so Jim, 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 could you try to unmute every, everyone because of things they give, or you don't have that ability to, to unmute everybody? and mute all the phone and let's see if we can uh, get the chief. Jim? Can you hear us? Chief Bagna? So, yeah. Yeah. Yes, there you go, there you go. Uh, so Jim, see that? Please call on number 12. Somebody need to mute yep. their phone. I'm talking now, so tell him to call on number 12. So that's that's the chief. Yeah, yeah chief. Councilman Joe. Go ahead, Chief. Yeah. I'm caller 12. Imagine that number. That's our nickname, 12. All righty. So first of all, uh, thank you all for having this conversation. Uh, I want to make sure you can hear me before I go on. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I cannot hear you. Okay. So, you cannot hear me? Yes, you can. Most of us can. Most of you can. Okay, here we go. So th there's been a lot said today uh, that we have not had an opportunity uh, to give a response uh, because I, I don't think it would be rebuttal because I will tell you that we are in agreement with much of what uh, that has been said, uh, even the negative uh, as it relates to our uh, past and present performance as it relates to the internal affairs uh, unit and our relationship or lack thereof with CRB. So in response to some of these things, uh, the only thing that I take slight issue with is I don't want anyone to get off of this call thinking that we have been sitting idle uh, since I came on board knowing that this situation was dysfunctional. So over the past 18 months, we have done the following. Uh, the first thing that the, you, you all have asked for is a list of habitual offenders. We will make sure uh, that you have that from our perspective to make sure that these, these things match because one of the things that we're having issues with is that CRB is putting stuff out in the universe. We put something out in the universe and then there was a, there's a I would also ask you to look at discipline uh, over over the past several years versus what discipline looks like today, uh, specifically in cases where we have sustained uh, investigations against officers' behavior. Uh, we overhauled the entire uh, internal affairs unit. The lieutenant was removed. The sergeant uh, uh, moved out to to, a, uh, to another unit. There's a new lieutenant in place. Uh, there was recently two new sergeants added to the unit this past week. Today is this first day on the job. We have our third sergeant uh, as an investigator in there because of the high volume of cases that they receive. We are in need of a civilian to help with some of the work, but I'm in a position now that I cannot hire a civilian uh, because there's this looming uh, possibility uh, of a layoff within city government and last hired, uh, first laid off, uh, would be unfair for someone to quit their job or to be laid off, uh, you know, two months into the job. So I cannot hire for that position until we are more stable internally. Next thing, we moved completely out of police headquarters into the um, 
uh, City Hall Commons directly across the hall from where CRB is for obvious reasons as, we, as why we thought that would be beneficial. They had a liaison the committee uh, that, increased, that included Jeff Piedmont uh, as a part of that committee that it basically went defunct. There was no communication between the two, uh, and I'm told it was somewhat of an adversarial relationship. We've since put a new group of individuals that does not include the union president uh, as a part of that uh, liaison committee to bring that back. Uh, we've also uh, created a committee to begin looking at the language to, to assist with changing some of the legislative language that we cannot do without approval of the council. Uh, it is, I, I know that Councilman Rudd has been to one of those meetings, Councilman uh, Driscoll has been to one of those, me those meetings, and I, and I believe the Council um, Joke has been to some of those meetings. Some of these deadlines that we are discussing, that we're talking about, that we're not meeting, I can tell you that operationally, it will be difficult for us to meet those deadlines, and we're going to respectfully ask that we be given a more reasonable timeline to perform the job. Next thing, uh, I uh, put a monthly meeting on, on the calendar with Raynette to where I can hear directly from her to make sure that what I'm hearing, seeing internally matches up with what she's saying externally. Uh, so we have that monthly meeting to, to, to have discussions. Uh, since uh, coming on board, I've also now required uh, all interviews to be recorded so that if there's a discrepancy or a challenge on something, we now have a recording of the interview of the individuals that were interviewed for the cases. Uh, 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 lastly, I would say that any attempts uh, to, to parallel or draw uh, an apple-to-apple -apple comparison to police process versus CRB and why are they able to get finished in their uh, 30 days or 45 days and you can't do it in your number of days? Well, the first thing we need to look at to, uh, and, and, and accept is that they're not parallel because, number one, Raynette does not interview officers because the officers will, will not speak with CRB because of union recommendations. So we're interviewing people that, just, that she does not even meet, and in some cases there's multiple officers that have to be interviewed uh, and then you, when you take into account off days, vacation, training, trying to round up these officers to get them in for the interviews, it's a logistical nightmare. So anytime to, that we try to make it seem as if that they're doing the same thing that we're doing, that's just not a true statement. The other part is a part of the, the mayor's uh, executive order. Uh, we recognize that we were not complying with the language to where my decision should not come uh, chronologically before the recommendations come from CRB, uh, and we're in the place uh, in the process of formalizing that so that procedurally I will not be making decisions before Raynette has had an opportunity uh, to weigh in. I will tell you on our best day in performance thus far, uh, we are still a disappointment. Uh, but to say that we have not recognized it and that we have not through behavior shown a commitment to try to respond to what we're, uh, what we're seeing, it's unfair, uh, and you cannot provide tangible examples to say that we are not working to try to fix these issues. Uh, it's on my, my shoulders to try to do that. I understand that. Uh, I apologize that we still have this issue, but all of you who know this issue, you've been dealing with this, you've been speaking on this for as long as you have, you know what I inherited. You know what I inherited. And to, and to say or imply that we have not been doing anything is offensive. That's all I have, Councilwoman Joe. Th thank you, Chief. I, I think, um, we've, I, I, I don't know when you joined the meeting, but I think Raynette has been very clear. She said that, that, that um, since you took over that the work that you have been doing has been better than 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 what she has previously before you came so i, I just for in defense of reina that she did she did point that out that that you 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 are trying and your 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 working relationship with her has tremendously improved than than before that's that's what that's what she said earlier before you uh you you uh um, you, I don't know what, what time you joined, but she. I just thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, so I, she does. I've been for the majority of the call, sir. Okay, so she does. She does command that you, the work that you are doing with your team is is, is better than than what she had before. Right. Okay.
Now, uh, we, we, yes? Joe Bennett had a question as well. Okay, Joe? Hey, yeah, my name is Joe Bennett. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, firstly, I do wanna say, I bet the CRB does probably interview some people. But before we get to that, um, I did have a question about like, what's the holdup on releasing like police misconduct information, you know, that other cities have released. Um, I, in New York, New York, a bunch of cities have released this information. What's the holdup on us releasing this information? Well, that's that's I think uh, Bennett that that uh, that's a different that that's a different uh, question for for this meeting. I think that's more of a police question than 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 for us. And the uh, the uh, the amend the amend uh, the amending of the 58, uh, people are still trying to juggle with and figure out what to do with it here. So I, I think I think it is it would be unfair to to ask Chief Wagner to answer that as. She, as he's trying to figure out, or oh, Chief, are you in a position to answer it? Yeah. Uh, our our legal folks uh, are giving us the process uh, by which we, we will be able, uh, or that we that we should be using in order to release the information. Uh, I was both publicly and privately uh, in favor of this. For anyone that has uh, listened or heard me, uh, transparency is a good thing. Uh, and I think that many people think negative things about our police department because for too long we have told people, none of your business go away. That's hurt us. So I'm in favor of releasing this stuff because you're going to see that we do discipline officers. We do have accountability. Of course you're going to disagree with some of the, the discipline that we've handed out, but I think that once these things are revealed, it will be better for the police department. We have to get out of our own way. To your question, sir, the time. until legal gives us the process by which we are to use to do so, we are waiting on all of the requests that we have, and we have numerous, uh, uh, and, and we will comply with the, uh, the, the FOILs once we have a process in place uh, to do so. Timeline? Do not have a timeline. If I can add it, um to that, I agree with uh, the comments that Chief is making. We are, you know, our attorneys are discussing with Corporation Counsel currently as to how we will do that process. Will the CRB release the information itself? Um, will we continue to have our perspective as to not sharing information with regards to the complainant? Um, and or or if we are going to be willing to do both? And if you decide, if there is a decision made that the CRB can release both complainant and officer information. Is the CRB going to agree to that? Or are we going to continue to hold um, to the strict confidentiality that we have with regard to the complainant as it takes so many of them so much for them to file a complaint with our office that just to see their names in the paper because the public would like it um, would, you know, may pose a concern. And we do not want to do anything that is going to hinder a member of the public from filing a complaint with us for fear of retaliation. Um, to um, the chief's point, um, I have stated, um, and I thank you, Councillor Majok, for reiterating the fact that I have stated that things have changed since the chief has become um, the chief currently, and that some of the issues that we are discussing, yes, he definitely has inherited. I mentioned the fact that we have been having conversations every month since January um, of last year in order to try to figure out the appropriate processes. So. Um, I agree that we have a long way to go, but we've made a lot of progress uh, since the chief has been here. And I continue to see that pro progress is going to be made. Um, and the repeal of 50A is going to help us with a lot of that. So I just uh -huh. wanted to point that out. Uh, and I think I think uh, Tim Rudd, Tim Rudd is already uh, itching to leave. Uh, I, I always say uh, we should go 10 minutes over and 10 minutes is uh, is one minute away but so so we should be ending here Ray yeah make sure uh, you 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 remember what uh, councillor Bay said about writing out all the recommendations because we we cannot do anything about what we don't see and what we don't hear councillor so, Bay you want to take something yeah, yeah yeah just real quick i mean at, at the crux of the whole thing we have a problem let's be clear we're we're clear on the fact that we have a problem. I'm born and raised here. I know exactly what the problem has been for years. I grew up in the bricks. I live on the south side still. You know, so we have a problem 
And the people just need to feel confident in the fact that we heard them and that we're going to do something about it. And I can assure you, you don't have to worry about that. One way or another, we're going to get to the result we need to get to. And so we know there's a lot of disagreements. None of that matters. The bottom line is get to a solution. And so we appreciate what y'all do. And keep working with us, man. We'll get there. I couldn't, couldn't, I couldn't say it any better, Councilor Bay. So I think with that, we will end our meeting here. I want to thank everybody for coming, and I want to thank Tim Rod for staying extra 10 minutes. All right, have a good night. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Get your job done. Good job. Good job.